Uh, definitely want to get into uh, Uptown Funk. Can we get a little preview and just how that came together? You know, that got you one of the, I would say, most coveted awards, Grammy record of the year. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible because, you know, that was kind of like a passion project, right? Because I had met Mark Ronson working on Bruno's second album. Right. Was, Bruno's like an old friend of mine. Like, I've known him since he was like 16 or 17 when right. he first came to L.A. And then he introduced me to Mark, um, who I was a big fan of. And then Mark asked me to co-produce his album with him, his solo album, The Uptown Special. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was a lot more of like a narrative kind of like we did this whole road trip through the South and tried to, we discovered like this amazing singer. We held auditions. We were like creating this whole story. But then, of course, we were going to get in with Bruno and do a song and like it's just this jam, just like this funk jam that and we had like the first two lines, but we knew this was like an amazing record. Right. And then kind of worked on it on and off for like the next eight. 10 months and dialed it and dialed it and dialed it. You know, it's just like that thing, like with Kanye's records or the like Bruno's the same, you know, like we're not putting it out until it's right. And um, just kind of figuring out that puzzle. But yeah, that was a, you know, just another amazing group of people who like Mark's like another person who really like embraced me and kind of introduced me to everyone and included me in everything and Bruno's just like his friendship and us coming up together it's just just an awesome time and Emil Haney was in, involved with that kind of brought him into the the at least on Bruno's second album and then like you know it's just another another scene of such a fun just such a blessing to kind of be in a scene of people kind of like Metro and Gunna and, right. and Thug have now. It's I, it. I got to experience that when I went and did the record with Nate and Thug. Like, so awesome to, right. to uh, you know, have these, like, scenes of creative people coming together. And it's kind of like a party and you're living it and you're creating. So, yeah, like that whole era of Uptown Funk. Just, and, of course, like, seeing, like, what it went on to do was just, like, a bit surprising, but... Was it? Very. I mean, we knew it was going to be a hit, but we didn't know it was going to be like at that time, like the longest running, like number one song. Right. Like of the aughts or whatever it was. Like it was just a, just such a phenomenon and, and so cool that it kind of crossed so many boundaries and cultures. Like I'm such a huge Earth, Wind and Fire fan. Right. I love that about like, right. if you look in the audience and their old footage, like Bruno shows are like that too. Like old people, young people, white, black, like Hispanic, Asian, like it just crosses all boundaries. And, you know, that's like an amazing, that's the beautiful thing about music to kind of, up to, I think also like working with Kanye, it was always this kind of very serious, like not necessarily serious, like on the surface, but there's kind of an intent to innovate art and be like quite serious about innovating and making something new and trying to push the, edge right. leading edge of culture and art where uptown Funk's, funk's not necessarily doing that but it made me realize when i saw how many people it brought together that right. that in itself is really special and important you know to like for people to kind of forget their dis differences and say like this is something that we can agree on that we definitely want to just get down to uptown funk like right. it's just awesome you know to see that and be a part of that and something I, you know, I always want to strive for in any record I'm making that another common thing like Kanye does, like with like uh, taking out the cursing, you know, and stuff like that. It's like an interesting, so you, you don't want to exclude people, you know, like you can, but I think once you see the, the power, once you experience the power of doing a show for over a hundred thousand people or seeing a record resonate with literally tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people. Right, right. It, 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 it brings it home like how much more serious like you might want to take it, like right. how the impact of your music can be. Totally. I think you struggle, people struggle with like, oh, this is just my personal expression, you know, and like that it, it is and it should be. But once you kind of crack into that, that's kind of like dribbling a basketball and being like, I like 
dribbling. It's right. just fun for me. You know, right. it's like that's different than winning the NBA finals. Right. And all the things you have to do to get there. Right. Totally. You know? And how that changes you as a human being. Definitely. Man, can you bring us back to when you were, you know, in the band with Bruno Mars and he was doing cover songs? I think he did Elvis. Right down the road. Well, he did Elvis when he was like a baby, basically, like oh, five wow. years old. But then five? He, 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 you can YouTube it, like <laughs> five-year-old Bruno Elvis. Um, but yeah, he came to LA and we were working on writing. We had this mentor, Steve Lindsay, that would like kind of mentor us, our songwriting and everything. And then after a while, I could see him kind of like, he's just such an incredible entertainer and like has that power to just all the folk be the focal point of like just energy flowing through him that I was like, you know, we need to, we should just get a little gig and just do gigs because you need to be on the stage connecting with people. We need to translate that to the, so yeah, Pickwick's, Pickwick's bar, like somewhere in the Valley, like we would go do like our, our little gig with his brother who's still his drummer in his band, um, um, who was like, I think a police officer at the time. And oh, we wow. would just do our little trio jam. And, and yeah, that was a special time. It was like shortly after that, that I got the call to do the Kanye thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, see ya. And then a couple of years later, I was driving to the studio and heard uh, Nothing On You on the radio. Oh, and I was wow. like, that's Bruno. <laughs> that, this, this is like a hit song. He's, right. he's gonna be He's gonna be huge, you know? Right. And, and just watching him, you know, another one that's just like taking it to the moon, taking it to the stars. Right. He's on liftoff. Right. You know, he kind of brought that in and just like his hit another work ethic and attention to detail and just such an incredible performer. Um, you know, I just have so much admiration and uh, blessed to come, come into contact and call him a friend and, and have worked with him and be inspired by him for sure. 